Hello everyone, it's Clay Ramage, and first off, let me just say welcome to my channel, um, and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all the new subscribers. This is my first video since I hit a thousand subscribers last week, or four days ago, um, and it's just been awesome. I can just only say thank you, and I can't say thank you enough to everybody who supported our little adventures here of uh, thrifting and uh, showing you guys what we've found at thrift stores of course the goodwill outlet bins one of our favorite places to go as well as um garage sales and you know my mom's house and my wife's families and all sorts of different places that you can find incredible stuff but uh yeah so thank you to all the new subscribers thank you to all my loyal supporters over the almost year it'll be a year january 14th so two more months we'll be have started this channel uh, it'll be a year that's just blows my mind anyway so i wanted to say thank you for that and we're excited for the next uh you know few months and years as we continue to uh, find great treasures and sorry for the lighting it's a little um overcast today so not too much light in my office i don't have a good overhead light so i'll be a little darker today but that's okay we're still happy in our hearts right um, so if you haven't already and you're just your first time to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the uh, don't like button. I don't care. It's good. We have fun. Uh, please, you know, leave comments, thoughts, um, and, uh, because we love that. We respond to all comments and, uh, and if you see something that you like, I'm doing a haul video today. Um, so if you see something you like, send me an email. My email address is in the description box down there and also um, I started posting on Instagram so uh, you can head over to Instagram search for Clay Ramage and you can find my page and go ahead and you know subscribe to that as well although I don't think it's subscribe but follow me on Instagram and um, I'll go from there so let's just get into some of the stuff we found um, we uh, recently had a trip down to Faribault for a family birthday party and we stopped at a Goodwill. I found a couple things there I'm going to show you. And then um, I, a friend of mine from Chicago that I've known for a long time, anyway, you know, she contacted me about her mom moving and had some stuff. And I showed you a video a while back of a box she sent me of different linens and hankies and stuff. And so we have more of that um, lot that I'm going to be showing. Um, so, yeah. So let's just get right into this. Um, so at the Faribault Goodwill store, we stopped there, um, I found this little figurine. It's little Jack Horner. It's a Royal Dalton piece. Oops, goes that way. And, um, or that way, so you guys can read it. These are from, this particular one with him seated is from 1949 to 1953 approximately. They made him. And he's actually quite rare and quite valuable posted on my Instagram page that he's worth like $150. They range from like $125 to $195. But um, I didn't realize at the time, and I don't know if it'll show up well on camera, but his head is cracked. Right down the middle. Right down his face, too. Um, so, yeah. So that was disappointing when I realized that. <laughs> I didn't see it at the store, so I don't know if it... don't think it happened on the way home. Um, but it's not noticeable unless you're really looking. Um, like right now, I can't even see it. But when I took a picture of it for eBay, it is listed on eBay. When I took a picture of it, he uh, it showed up quite well. <laughs> so anyway, but still a good thing. He's still worth a little bit of money. I paid $2.99 for him. So um, less than that because I had a discount. I had a 20% off coupon. The other figure I found was this one. This one is called Girl with Dog. Sometimes people refer to it as Girl with Puppy. But this is a Zephyr uh figure um and there's some controversy over whether this the company that made it there's the mark on the bottom it's very hard to read um it was kind of intentional that way i guess their signature is always hard to read um but there's some controversy as to whether this company was really owned by ladro yadro um but the designer for this company came from yadro started this company and then went back um so this company was only 
functioning for a few years. This particular piece is from 1982 uh, is when it started and it's in perfect condition. No chips, no cracks. It's also listed on eBay now. Um, so the price estimate they're saying 75 to to $100. I have it at 50 because none of the sold comps are reaching that. So I think that's a high estimate, but, but it's beautiful. Very high quality, very well done. But it does have a rattle. She's got a little piece of porcelain loose inside when she rattles. But it doesn't affect it at all. It's just kind of funny. Um, this is from my friend Deb's family estate. This is a Holt Howard. It's even dated 1958. Holt Howard duck. And it's a pencil sharpener. That's the little sharpener there. Uh, it, again, it is just like in perfect condition. There is a tiny scratch that you can't even see. It's in the finish. It doesn't go down into the base material, but you can only see it in certain light. So it's really not much of a factor. And again, I don't know if that was a manufacturer issue or if it happened later on. There's no way to know. But then it's got the felt glued to the bottom. So if you did use a pencil sharpener, it would just eventually uh, build up. <laughs> You'd have to tear the bottom off to empty it out. But obviously it's a it's much more of a decorative piece. And I did find out these Holt Howard pencil sharpeners. I never I did not find one that's this particular duck model. There's a number of them out there. Um and they're quite valuable. So this one's listed on eBay as well, I think for like right around $50. That's what I have it out there. Um another item is this particular, it's a match holder. So your matches would go here and you can see the phrase that says, don't scratch me, scratch mother. So in other words, when you went, pulled your match out and you wanted to strike it, you just scratch the back of her back to light the match. And then you drop the used ones in there. Um, it is marked on the bottom. There's this stamp that's, you know, in within the porcelain there. So it's a beautiful little piece, cute, cute little kitty. Um, I did clean it. It was quite dirty and there's still some dirty spots on it, but, uh, this is like circa 1900. So this is like 120 years old. I'm amazed the tips of the cats are, um, perfect. They're not chipped. They're not dinged. Um, and this, I'm trying to think of the name of the company, Vader, B-A-T-E-R. Um, I did have a piece of paper now. I forgot what it was, but anyway. It's a German company, um, and those, again, sell for fairly good money. I think I ha have that one listed for around $50, $50 as well. Um, then, oh yes, it's Schaefer, Schaefer Vader. That's what it is, Schaefer Vader. These fabulous little candlestick holders with the pixies. And look, at they're multicolored, like I call them rainbow-colored pixies. There's two of them in the set. Um, they are made by Lefton. Marked on the bottom, made in Japan. They're the luster wear finish with that iridescent look. Just awesome. And again, they are just like in pristine condition. Um, and they've got the little spaghetti wear, as you would call it, around the edge underneath the where the candle is held um and there there's a couple of those that are chipped off but not enough to even be noticeable um so yeah it's just fantastic so these are listed on ebay i have them listed as well i just think they're so cute so anyway yes great stuff and then Another vintage item, and I looked at this and I was quite confused for a little while. Looks like who? Looks like Santa, but it's not Santa. It's called Sandy Sandman. Didn't know much about Sandy Sandman, so and he's needs a needs a good clean, but he actually there's a hole here. He held a bottle tree, bottle brush tree. Christmas tree, or snow-covered tree, actually. It wasn't decorated. It should just be a snow-covered bottle brush tree. Um, and it's interesting. He's got a slot here to put your coins in. So he's a bank. 
but he's also a lamp. See the switch, the power cord? What puzzled me is why would you have a bank where you drop coins in it with a light bulb on the <laughs> inside? I'm like, that uh, seems rather dangerous, especially when the light bulb is just a regular little, you know, these small light bulbs. I'm like, oh my, that's, that's easily breakable. You know, and the coins in there, boy, you could start a fire with that pretty easily. And there, again, there are very, very few of these that I've found. Um, so, <laughs> but I think I'm going to um, see if I can find, we have a bunch of the bottle, tr bottle brush trees in our Christmas stuff. I'll see if I can't find one that might fit um, in there. Otherwise, you know, I'm just going to sell him as a Christmas decoration. He is covered with stars and moons. But yeah, Sandy Sandman. Sandman cometh. This is my wife, one of my wife and I's favorite things. <laughs> it's an old egg beater, but it has the glass dish. Patent date of 1923. October, I believe, too. Yes, October 9th, 1923. So this is just short of 100 years old. These are, you know, you, you see these around, but they're just so fun. And uh, so I don't know if we're going to keep this or... We'll probably sell this, but we both really like that one a lot. But another fabulous find. You know, let me see about doing this a little differently. And these are all her family pieces. These have been in her family for a long time. This is dollhouse furniture. There's the sofa. This is a, I'm not sure if it's a lucite or a plastic. And I don't honestly know how exactly you would tell the difference. But um, it is a little discolored yellowish, which I believe Lucite does not do, but it might. Um, so there's the sofa. There's a, two chairs. There's And there's four tables, end tables, and a small coffee table. But aren't they just awesome? And here's the chair. Look at that twisted back. <laughs> These have got to be from the, like, I would say late 40s, early 50s. Just wonderful pieces. There's a, two of these with the red top, two of these little tables. Um, there are two of the, the one chair and this coffee table that had um, the legs broken off. But I used a little bit of glue, and they are in wonderful condition now. You can't even tell. Um, but again, I have these listed in my eBay store. In my eBay store, you can always find in the link in my description or under Clay's Collections is the name of my eBay store. So yeah, so I have no idea. I've never seen, nor could I find anything like these. So I'm not sure if these were, you know, like a one-off. Somebody just made them for, or if they were sold in stores. You know, on a limited basis. But yeah, to find that style is really unusual. So I really like those. So those are in my store. And when uh, my friend was going through her mom's house, <laughs> she sent me a picture of this and said it was the ugliest thing she'd ever seen. And yes, some people think these items are ugly. This is a cherub-based dish. You can see cherubs on it. You know, you know, it's a creamish, yellowish color with the red and the green. Uh, it's made in Japan, hand-painted, marked on the bottom. I'm not sure who the mark is. I haven't looked it up. There is a footed bowl like this, but it's a taller bowl. Um, you know, this listed for 40 or $50 right now. So, um, and it does, it's in great condition with the exception of some crazing. You can see on the bottom the crazing. And that's throughout the piece. But that's to be expected, you know, with some of these older items. It's when they get exposed to higher temperatures, um, the finish can crack if it's not a consistent temperature. That's kind of what causes crazing in porcelain. Um, sorry, I'm hopping out of the camera range, but I have stuff kind of scattered all over. Another thing we found was this little glass bunny. He was quite dirty. I cleaned him up, so he's... Really cute. But again, he's he's not an expensive piece. In fact, originally he was 
still has the original price of 10 cents on the bottom marked on the bottom of them but just a cute cute little piece this was a fun little find these this old copperware this particular one is does have movement to it plays the song and then the ship goes up and down as this little cam goes around so it's like the ship is sailing over the seas right um it plays a little slow so i think it needs a little oil but the more we play it the more it kind of works better and uh the uh, music box is made by sankyo in japan sankyo is s-a-n-k-y-o um and there were a number of these figurines that were created over the years this particular one does have rust on the base um because it's copper color you don't really notice it that much i haven't tried to clean it up but yeah just a fun little piece i actually back in the 70s my aunt gave me a player piano of this same copper material that she got so so i still have that um the other thing was this lighter Oof, still flashes um, it's hand engraved on the bottom, with some initials in India. So, and with this, oh, I don't know what I did with it. There were two candlesticks that were bells that were also part of this. Let's see. They're around somewhere. Like I say, I got stuff all over my office. But, another fun piece that I really like, I've got it all ready to go to the pink elephant, is this vintage oil lamp. It's in the shape of a <laughs> pot belly stove, but what I love is the shade. I've never seen one like this before, where it just flares up a little bit. It's got that little um, section where it narrows and then goes up to the top. There is a small chip at the very top of the of the um, shade but still just a great piece still got the sticker on the bottom made in japan so <laughs> yeah i really like that and let's see what else we got oh i can't forget these these are like my favorite again it's a little oil lamp there's the base still in the original box there's two of them And so, here's the pieces. Here's the here's the wick mechanism to raise and lower it. And then here's the little glass shade in amber glass. You can see, you know, that it was a hand blown piece. So there it becomes a little oil lamp like that. Or it's got a hole in the handle where you can flip it like this and hang it on the wall. So it becomes a little decorative item for the wall. I just love these. I think they're awesome. There's two of those in the original box. So yeah, great stuff. Um, and again, there's lots of other items. Let me just grab a couple more. And again, my friend Deb, her grandmother had a store in Chicago called Vise Handmade Soaps, but she also sold tons of linens and other items. So this, these are some linens that were included. Beautifully done embroidery on them. These are all folded so neatly. And the, it's super high quality linen too. And then here's another one. These are unfold because they're folded with the pattern on the inside. Beautiful um, butterfly with the black border around. And then the crocheted border on the end. And yes, I'm learning the difference between crocheting and tatting. Thanks to you guys. You guys have helped me a lot in learning how to identify the difference. And uh, then I talked to my mom and she helped me a little bit. So, so yeah, so it's good. We're learning and growing and finding out all sorts of new stuff. So anyway, that's our video. Again, thank you so much for your support and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye.